Learn the details regarding scoliosis and pregnancy. Since scoliosis affects uh, women and girls more often than it does men and boys, the most common question I get asked with women with scoliosis is, you know, can this affect my ability to become pregnant or can it affect my daughter's ability to become pregnant? And that's a great question. And the great answer is yes, women can become pregnant with scoliosis, but in some cases there may be some additional back pain or some additional pain associated depending on the type of scoliosis, which we'll talk about in a second, okay? In extreme cases, there may be more difficult challenges, but this is in more severe scoliosis um, cases, I mean, very severe sizes. So, but in most we can understand that scoliosis does not affect the ability or the average person with scoliosis to become pregnant when it compare it to their non-scoliosis counterparts. So let's talk first of all, can scoliosis affect fertility? We know there's no evidence that scoliosis can affect fertility. We also know that scoliosis can't really, doesn't really affect any reproductive organs because scoliosis tends to affect the thoracic or lumbar spine, not necessarily the pelvis. But can scoliosis cause back pain during pregnancy? That's probably one of the biggest questions I get asked. And there is some evidence to say it can because um, where the scoliosis is, it tends to be more often with a lumbar or a thoracolumbar curve than a thoracic curve, meaning the lower the curve is, the lower the scoliosis is, the more likely it is to cause some type of pain or back pain during scoliosis. However, there are some patients that say they'll experience no additional pain and they're no different than any other patient becoming scoliosis. So it's not completely clear. Um, one other question I get asked a lot is, can it affect labor? Can it actually affect giving, uh, giving birth? That was a really um, misconception a long time ago that doctors used to tell patients that had scoliosis that there's no way you can be able to bear a child naturally, that you must have a C-section. We know that's completely not true because again, scoliosis affects the spine, not the pelvis as much. Even though some scoliosis patients could have a torque or, or, or rotation in the pelvis, a lot of times they can bear children uh, normally and naturally. Sometimes if you have a severe scoliosis, it could affect respiration, which could affect your ability to breathe well during labor. But in the majority of cases, having a, a child naturally does not, is not affected with scoliosis patients. One big complication though, is if you happen to ha become pregnant and you go into a hospital and you're planning to have a, an epidural, that can be a complication because the epidural and the needles actually injected into the lumbar spine and they're trying to hit certain nerves. And of course, if your spine isn't in the middle, meaning that you have a scoliosis off to the left or off to the right, the anesthesiologist has to know exactly where your spine is. And a lot of times they can miss. And if they miss, obviously you're not gonna get the epidural effect that you want. And then it can also affect um, the way that, the, the, how, how well it does. You can have more complications as a result of an epidural. And, and that could cause some more future concerns. So that's why you have to, anesthesiologists will have to know where your curve is and the size is. So if you go in with an x-ray, that would definitely help you. One concern also is can um, becoming pregnant, can it affect the progression of your scoliosis? And we know that weight gain doesn't affect scoliosis, so we, we know that the weight of, the, of becoming pregnant doesn't affect it. But one theory is that you do produce a hormone called relaxin. Relaxin is a hormone that creates a little bit of laxity in the ligaments so the pelvis can open and separate during pregnancy so you can actually give birth. However, can this relaxin hormone cause your curve to progress while you're pregnant? And that's an unsure answer. Nobody really knows, nobody's really studied it. Theoretically, it does make sense that there may be some progression. However, the most clear part regarding scoliosis progression and women and pregnancy is actually postmenopause. We know in postmenopause, there tends to be some thing that causes progression to occur in women, but it's unclear during pregnancy itself that will it progress post pregnancy. And personally, I've seen cases that have progressed post-pregnancy, meaning the curve progressed during the pregnancy uh, year. And I've seen other cases that have not. So it's unclear. We really don't know why some do and some don't. Last thing is you know, when we talk about pregnancy and, and, and having children with scoliosis, the one big concern is, well, if I have scoliosis, is my child going to have scoliosis? And so we think that the, there's this 100% genetic factor associated with scoliosis. And we know that's not true either. We're, there is, as far as we haven't identified any specific gene, meaning that you're gonna pass on a gene that's gonna be responsible for your child or your, or your son or your daughter to develop scoliosis, we, we, we don't know that. Do we think there's a genetic component? Of course we think there's a genetic component, but we think it's more like epigenetics, that you may have the, the factors to develop scoliosis, but you may not be exposed to the, 
to the environment or the, to, the, to the effects that may cause the scoliosis to occur. This is very well supported in the studies regarding twins, that they know they've done studies with identical twins with scoliosis, and not every identical twin both have scoliosis, and these are patients with the exact same DNA. So we know, there's an, we know there's another factor. In fact, some of these twin studies, they will have, if they have both have scoliosis, they have completely different sizes. Like one can have a small curve, one can have a very severe curve. Sometimes they have opposite curves. So we know there is some genetic factors, but we know it's not genetic cause. There's another reason why scoliosis develops in children and, or even adults, and these reasons we believe are multifactorial, not just slowly genetic. So to sum it all up, yes, scoliosis patients can become pregnant. They may have some more complications with back pain and epidurals, but normally they can deliver and have children normally, and they don't have to really worry about passing on genetics that would actually cause scoliosis in their children, but they should be mindful of getting their children examined and evaluated because there is some genetic relationship, even though there's not a genetic cause. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.